I see this happening all over the, I mean, in almost every family and in every group that I come into contact with in my day-to-day life, I, I just meet increasingly neurotic and dysfunctional people. And it's, it's like if you take your head out of the water, you know, you put your head above everything and you look around and you say, something's really fucked up around here. <laughs> you know, like, why, why is this, the, this is not normal. I mean, it is normal, but it shouldn't be normal. You know, this shouldn't be the existence that we have here. I mean, we're just anxiety ridden, you know, exhausted, sick people. And, and we're just trying to keep this machine going. And I don't think we even understand what we're doing in that process. And, and what I love about your work is, you I mean, you get to the deep, um, deeper elements of it, but you, you make it relatable. So people can kind of like, oh, okay, I get that. Yeah, I've never thought about how weird it is that we have clocks everywhere. You know, like, what does a clock really mean? What is a calendar? Um, wh- who is that actually serving? And, uh, you know, and then, and, then, and then the other thing that I want to say, I'm sorry, I'm kind of rambling here. No, um, not at all. But the um, the thing that I find really fascinating is trying to imagine what it would be like to live and grow up without any concept of like a calendar or a clock or hours or seconds. Like, what would life feel like? What would what kind of what's the nature of of that consciousness of that form of experience? Um, I I, I wonder about that all the time. So anyway, I just, those are just some random jumbled thoughts, <laughs> but I, I think that's kind of a lot of the things that I think about when I, when I read your work. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. That's the uh, foremost to me. It's just, uh, it's just banging on the door, you know, in effect. And I couldn't agree with you more, Patrick, about community. It's, it really does come down to that. And in mass society, the, as you point out, vis-a-vis your family, I mean, you can't be accountable or responsible. You just have to rely on all these specialists and institutions. Community is gone. It just is. That's just a word now. It just that's why all these pathological things keep developing. And they're not going away because I mean it would be nice if they do, but uh, insofar as there's no community, everything is up for grabs. People have no stake in anything. They're just cut off. They have nothing to hold on to. You know, it seems to be such a mystery, this this, this mass shootings, which really, really only began uh, in effect uh, since the late 90s. And now it's just virtually every day. And so, you know, it's such a mystery. It, it's just amazing how much the denial uh, is enforced. You know, for example, in in that case, uh, well, the, the more left leaning people say it's about guns. It's all about guns. Too many guns. And then the more right-wing uh, people tend to say it's mental health, it's mental health. Well, neither of those things are anything but superficialities. You know, for one thing, there were guns in the household since colonial times, okay? I mean, that's just, that doesn't, and, and the, in, in the other respect, mental health, uh, there have been people disabled with emotional illness for a while now, but they didn't go out and just murder, you know, scores of people, did they? So goes the mental health argument that, that it's it's really it's quite spurious. You, I'm, I'm beginning to see a little bit of a change, though. There's a little bit more tolerance for uh, asking deeper questions. I, I'm beginning to see that. Uh, we do this journal. I'm one of five editors of Black and Green Review, and uh, I was working on an editorial about that. That there is more, seemingly more connection, more interest in in uh, in, in maybe in part. You know, you and I having this discussion. You know, but. And or uh, Ben Etherington's piece, he's saying, yeah, this is this is in the air now. And well, it better be. I mean, I'm not saying we know exactly what to do. We got no blueprint as anarchists. We don't want a blueprint. But it's not too hard to see what direction we should be going in trying to get somewhere uh, in terms of what used to hold things together and what did what was wonderful for children and, and the things you mentioned. You know, it's everything. It's hard to see something. It's hard to even find anything that it's it's looking good as we go down the road. And people, you would think, what kind of life do you want for your kids, even five years from now? You know how much worse it's going to be in only five years. It's it's kind of, I mean, I hope that's not so, but uh, everything points to that. So there you go. It's it's time to uh, it's time to get serious and. 
but there's so much, you know, and one other thing upon that thing, I think this is pertinent, and that's the whole ideological glue that whole things, holds things together. And it's my view that the political paradigm, the political claims and promises are really pretty damn dead. I mean, nobody believes this stuff anymore. You know, the American dream and the more abstract ones, all the way from enlightenment, all these promises, things are going to get so much better with science and technology and superstition will go away and all these other things. But uh, that hasn't come to pass. Uh, it hasn't come to pass whatsoever. And so what I think is happening more and more is that technology is speaking now. It's the one that says we're going to fix it. Yeah, problems, but we're going to uh, just around the corner. We'll figure out everything from the horrendous state of every big city on the planet, really, to anything else you want to think of, cancer and so forth. Uh, it really has stepped into the thing. And everybody wants to believe that, you know, things might be okay, might turn around and, and get fixed or something. But it's just such a stupendous uh, ensemble of lies and that. Because most basically, and I won't go on and on and on about this, but all of these problems, they come from technology in a general sense. Every one of them is created by technology, but the answer is always more technology. It's it's incredible. But, you know, what do people have to try to hold on to or put some faith into? It's, it's, a, it's ridiculous, but, you know, uh, we all have uh, some desire to see things work out and everything even though if you look at the basis of it you can't you you don't get to have those illusions anymore